I am indeed the editor-in-chief of Food & Wine magazine. And at Food & Wine magazine, we are obsessed with trends. We're obsessed with what comes next. It preoccupies us because we want to tell our readers about it. There was one trend that was so sexy, it was so big, it was so exciting. And you know the worst part of it? I felt like I, there was nothing I could do to share it with the readers. Imagine that. The trend was that supermarkets around the entire world were taking ugly fruits and vegetables, selling them at a reduced cost to help reduce food waste. That's a big topic. In France, this is my favorite campaign, the Intermarché, they had the campaign for the inglorious fruits and vegetables, the failed lemon and the ridiculous potato. And then to convince people that failed lemons could make great lemonade, or ridiculous potatoes could make a good stew, they prepared them. And their consumers got to try the ugly and the beautiful side by side. And no surprise, they discovered that the ugly and the beautiful tasted the same. Jamie Oliver in England, he created with a supermarket something called Beautiful on the Inside. <laughs> From Australia to Canada, markets are taking this on. And I really wanted to do something with this trend. So I did the only thing that the editor of Food & Wine does, and I looked to the chefs, because chefs like Tom Calicchio, Jose Andreas, they are leading us in the direction we all need to go. So I, I thought to myself, wait a minute, I remember. There's that chef, Rene Redzepi, who is at Noma in Copenhagen. He said that he went to his farmer after a long, cold winter and said, what do you got for me? And the farmer said, I really, I don't have much. There are these purple carrots, and they've been in the ground for a year. They're hairy, they're ugly. I don't know what they taste like. You want them? And Rene said, I'll take them. I'll take them. I'll take those cold, hairy carrots. He brought them back to Noma, and he nursed them with goat's butter and chamomile buds, and he served them with a sorrel sauce. And it was pretty beautiful in the end. In fact, this carrot became the most famous carrot in the world, a vintage carrot, in <laughs> fact. So then I thought, OK, I'm actually onto something. And then I called my guru in all things sustainable, and that's Dan Barber from Blue Hill. And I said, Dan, I had this really big story for food and wine. It's about you know, reducing food waste through encouraging people to eat ugly fruits and vegetables. And Dan's like, that's good. That's good, Dana. I'm glad you're on that. You know, I'm thinking about that a lot myself. But you need to think bigger. You can't stop at ugly fruits and vegetables. The, the problem and the opportunity is so much greater. He said, in fact, the answer is in something like monkfish. 50 years ago, he said, you had to cut off the monkfish's head, throw it in the sea, and the fishermen would come back with just the body. But Dan, just the other day, was eating monkfish head and monkfish collar and said that they were fantastic, among the most delicious things he'd eaten. And in fact, he said he was so interested in this topic that he's creating right this month a program called Wasted. Waste education, I might add. Um, and he's looking at ingredients that people throw away, like. This looks like a trash bin, right? It's smoked whitefish heads that Dan is going to turn into a tartare. He's looking beyond the beautiful, because, you know, that's not so beautiful. And then I thought of, there are other chefs. Michael Simarusti at Providence in Los Angeles. He is looking at sea creatures that are interesting. That is a gooey duck no matter what all of you were thinking when I put that slide up there. That's a gooey duck. And you have to chop it up, also sort of alarming, and um, to turn it into something really delicious, Michael turned it into the ugly bunch. This has more ugly sea creatures than you could imagine. Uni, which comes in a spiny package. The gooey duck, abalone. And so I realized 
these chefs were indeed making it possible for me at Food and Wine to open my mind and share something with the readers. But I decided this is not a story. In fact, it's not a story. A story is too small. This, in fact, is a movement, and it's a movement that Food and Wine needs to be a part of. You know, when I looked at what we find so beautiful in Food and Wine, is things that are the center cut, the filet, the perfect, pristine vegetables. But we need to open our minds and do more. And I realized there's hope. And you know where I found my first ray of hope? Was in a red tomato. That red tomato, I'm going to say 15 years ago, we would have thought that was a beautiful tomato. How do people here think that tomato is beautiful? OK, a few. The thing about that tomato is that it is probably picked green, gassed, traveled thousands of miles, gotten to your plate, and when it got to your plate and you took a bite, you know what? That tomato was probably cottony. And now you might look at that tomato and knowing that say, that is not beautiful to me anymore. We can change our idea of what is beautiful. That tomato, which looks a whole lot more like Halloween, that now looks beautiful to us. It looks like it might be an heirloom tomato. It looks like it might have flavor. It looks like it has history. It certainly looks like it has character. So if we can change our minds about the beauty of a tomato, then we can probably change our minds about the beauty of other ingredients. And if we can do that, if we can take what we once thought was ugly and see it as beautiful, we can reduce food waste and change the world. Now, I feel like you've been asked to participate a lot. Everybody wants you to do something, and I do too. I want you to all take a look around you and say, what if I judged as ugly that indeed is delicious? Where can I ask someone at a market or someone at a restaurant for something that is unexpected, that isn't the filet, that isn't the cut that we've all become accustomed to? And I ask you to join me as today at Food & Wine, we launch this hashtag, love ugly food because I sure love me some ugly food. Thank you very much.